there, welcome students. We are looking at adding and subtracting radical expressions. And what that means is we're adding and subtracting where we have a little square root guy or a radical. So when we add and subtract, we're just counting how many of these things that we have. In this first case that we're looking at, we can see that we have a square root of 3, and we're going to add to that another square root of 3. So how we write this, so we don't have to write square root of 3 plus square root of 3, is we write we have two of these square roots of three guys. Square root of 3 can't simplify. I'm just counting as if there was a Scrabble tile with a square root of 3 on it and another Scrabble tile with a square root of 3 on it. I'm just counting how many of those that I have just as if they were x's. And we even say we can only add like terms. So they have to be the same on the inside if I'm going to add or subtract them. So when I look at this next one, and I have the square root of 3 plus the square root of 5, I can't do anything with that. I just say, well, that's the square root of 3 plus the square root of 5, because nothing in that will combine or simplify. They're not like terms. When I look at the next one, I see that I have 4 square roots of 5 plus 2 square roots of 5. Now this means I have a total of 6 of these square roots of 5. And that's my answer for that one. The next one extends this. I have 5 square roots of 2 plus another square root of 2. Well, that gives me 6 of them. And then take away 4 of them. That means that I have 2 of these square roots of 2 guys left. On first glance, it looks like I can't do anything with this guy. I see that I have a square root of 3. Can't do anything with him. But this square root of 9, that just happens to be a 3. So I could simplify him like that. It doesn't really do anything. I still can't combine him with that other guy. But let's look at the square root of 6. Is there anything that can be done with that? Hmm, does he have a perfect number? Nope. So that's as low as it goes, and it's simplified, and I can't really add anything there. All right, let's look at some more. All right, let's look at this mean dude. Now, as it sits, I can't do anything with it, but I see that I have some areas where, say, this first one can simplify a little bit. And in order for me to actually add them, I actually have to have what's underneath the square root to be the same. And if there's any letters out here, they also have to be out here. So there's a whole big chunk of stuff that needs to be the same. This thing right here just tells me that I don't have to deal with the absolute values. It just says that x and y are always positive which means that I don't have to deal with those special cases that we did in the last section where we had absolute values and they were kind of messy. So let's look at this 75. You know, I see a perfect number inside that 75. I see a 25 times a 3. So this 25 comes out of the square root. He, when he comes out, is a 5. So when he combines with that 7, he's now a 35. 7 times 5 is 35. What's left in there is still that 3. Now notice that nothing can simplify with that x. He just stays there. But in this y, this happens to be y times y times y. So there's a pair. That pair, one of those guys, when they simplify, when he comes out, there's one of them left there. And that's kind of handy. And since that's gone out. I just have one left in there. Notice that this is not the same as this at all. It's kind of close though because I got a y and I got an xy, but no 12. So what I'm going to do now is I say, you know, that 12, he's got a 4 in him, and that happens to be 4 times 3. Now when that 4 comes out of the square root, he's a 2. And that 2 combines with that 4 to make 8. Because this is multiplying here. The y is still there. What's left inside is a 3 and an x and a y. Now, magically, notice that I have this on a Scrabble tile 
and this on a Scrabble tile. And they magically simplify to the same thing. You will find this happening a bunch. They'll magically simplify the same thing. So look for that to happen. It says I have 35 of them here, 8 of them here. I think that makes 27 of those bad boys. Why? Square root 3xy. He was mean looking, but now he's all done. All right, so let's see if we can look at another one. All right, in looking at this, got a cube root, it's a mess. I zone right in under here and say, you bad boys are not the same. So I can't add you as you sit. But I can see if there's something that can be simplified or reduced. If so, they might reduce to the th same thing. In fact, most of the time they will. But in this case, I am looking for triplets because of that 3. I'm looking for triplets. Notice that 8 is a perfect triplet because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. That comes out perfectly. I love that. When that 8 comes out, he's now at 2, so leaving me with 20 here. Let's write this cubed root guy. No numbers left in there, which is handy. This a, now the a happens to be to the fourth power. So that's a times a times a. I'm looking for triplets. That triplet comes out. He's now an a. What's left in there is still that a. And b squared, I'm sorry, but you got to stay, little bud, because there's not three of you. Still not the same thing, but hey, look, that's pretty close to what's over there, isn't it? If I look at that. Is that 27 perfect? Why, yes, he is. Because that happens to be 3 times 3 times 3. Mm-hmm. When that comes out, he combines with that 11. Makes 33. There's still my A there. And... Nobody else simplifies because there's not three of you guys. Now let's look and see what we have. If you'll notice that and this guy are the same. Magic. It says I have 20 of them here, 33 of them there. That makes 53 and I got to write all that stuff down. 3A squared. Ta-da! And there's his answer. Alright, we got a fraction guy here. Now, when I add fractions, what I need is a common denominator. And I'm not really seeing anything common between 2 and this square root of 3. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rationalize this denominator. And then maybe I can get a common denominator, but I can't really get one as I'm sitting right here. So what I'm going to do on this guy is I'm going to multiply top and bottom here by the square root of 3. In the previous section, we worked on rationalizing a denominator, and that's how we did this. So let's see what we have. I have the square root of 3 over 2. That doesn't change because i got a 2 there plus the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3, which was what we wanted. 1 times the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. Now, I can get a common denominator between a 2 and a 3. That would be a 6. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom here by 3. And what that will get me is 3 square roots of 3 over 6 plus... For the next one, I think I'll need a 6, so that's going to be 2 over 2. And writing what I get for that would be a 6, and this is 2 square roots of 3. When I add fractions, I keep the same denominator, 6, and I add the tops. So that's 3 square roots of 3 plus 2 of them. That makes a total of 5 square roots of 3. And that's how you add fractions when you have radicals in them. Kind of tricky. Take some practice. If you need any help, be sure and email me. Let me know. Y'all have a wonderful day.